Hey there, everybody. So excited for you to listen to the interview with my good friend, Raquel Quinette. She's an incredible business owner, has achieved so many amazing things. And uh, I cannot wait for you to hear all the success that she's had and everything that she's doing. But also, I'm excited to announce that Nancy and I have reopened the doors for 10 people to join the next round of our expert authority mastermind. Raquel was actually one of our founding members. She joined our mastermind last year. And for those that don't know about our expert authority mastermind, it's a year long uh, group coaching program with myself and my wife, Nancy. And, you know, we want to help people really understand how to create your personal brand, get clear on your messaging, Um, know what content you should be creating consistently, what you can do to set yourself apart from others in your industry, uh, become less overwhelmed, launch your podcast, write your book, and also get the support that you need uh, with, with what we have. We have built everything out for everyone, and it's in a structured way where you're not overwhelmed, you're moving really nicely through everything, So the fact is, is that you need the right personal branding strategy that's simple and effective. You need tools and guidance from those that actually have done what you're looking to achieve, which is myself and Nancy. We teach what we do. You need a 360 degree support and accountability system, which we've built all of that into this. And what makes this program different than others is we skip all the fluffy stuff. We get right down to action steps so you can achieve success in a very short amount of time. You save money by not having to hire multiple people who are charging too much and delivering too little, but also have that support system support system, and accountability you need throughout this process with us and gather the clarity and the simple structure to get to that finish line, which is launching a course, creating a course, publishing your book, starting your podcast, finding new leads every day on LinkedIn to move your business forward. And we do weekly group coaching. There's consistent support. You have a community of like-minded people that are supporting you. There's videos, there's modules, there's classes, there's strategic plans for your business. We do monthly 30-minute one-on-one accountability calls, but also quarterly goal checks to make sure that you're achieving all of your goals, free access to bonuses, private Facebook group, and more. So if you go to the description of this episode, you can find out more. You can schedule a call with me to see if it's a good fit. We have 10 people and that is it. And then we're closing up the doors. So don't hesitate. Join on up, but also enjoy this amazing interview with my good friend, Raquel Quinette. Networking and marketing made simple is for you the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. Super excited for today's episode. I have my good friend Raquel Quinette here. And Raquel is one of those individuals, and and a lot of people hear about, you know, growth strategists and business coaches, and there's a lot of hot air, you know, out there on social media. And especially in the, I would say the great resignation space <clears throat> that we're all in, it's, it's been apparent that there's a lot of people that, you know, it's not that they don't know what they're talking about, but they haven't been there and done that. And I can wholeheartedly say that Raquel is one of those people that has been there, has done that, and is still doing that. And she is that person who helps people. Uh, in the entrepreneurial space, in the online space, whether it's business coaching or general entrepreneurship or real estate, do two important things. Growing their business online, but scaling their business online. And I think a lot of people don't understand the full concept of what it means to scale. You can be pulled in multiple directions, and if you're pulled in the wrong direction, 
you can't grow your business the way that you want. So with all of that being said, Raquel, welcome to today's episode. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for having me on the show. I'm honored. So again, we've done some work together and, you know, I've been on your podcast and you're doing so many incredible things. What my audience always loves to know is a, who is Raquel and, you know, what does she do right now? Uh, And B most importantly, what do you feel through your entrepreneurial journey was the catalytic moment for you that has set you on the path that you are now and still currently on? Okay. Awesome. Loaded question to start with. So Raquel, who is Raquel? I have been, I started my first business at the age of 19. Um, We grew that to eight figures and um, that was in the real estate space. I've opened up mortgage companies, real estate teams across the country in 23 different cities. I've been, I was an entrepreneur at first and I was recruited to corporate. So it's completely opposite than what we hear. We leave the corporate world to be an entrepreneur. I was the exact opposite. I started my first business, then my second business, which was the mortgage company. Then I got recruited into leadership and corporate. And I was a CEO of the biggest uh, real estate company at the time for Keller Williams at the age of 26. Um, During a recession, so you learn a lot. Not only were we like growing our businesses in California, but when the market turned, you also learn the other side of business that people don't always talk about, right? The recession, when people are going through foreclosures, when your, your employees are getting their cars repossessed, right? So you learn a lot of different lessons and how to show up as a leader and how to keep leading them through difficult and hard times for the next three years. We didn't know what we didn't know. And so after that, we, um, I had my second child and we built another team. So that was like my second real estate team in another state, new market. So it's like starting another business, no database, no clients. How do I start? I have no connection in the city, no connection in the state. How do I scale that? We scaled that. And then that led me to another opportunity, which allowed me to scale it across the country. Cause we found a model. We found a model that worked. And I'm one of those that says like, um, we call them disruptors. If like they tell you you can't do it, I'm like, I think there's a way we can do it. And so we did that. We took that model. And then now today I coach entrepreneurs to scale their businesses, whether it's online or in the real estate space. So it's interesting because like you said, you took the opposite path that, that most people take where you started as an entrepreneur, went into corporate. And then went back to entrepreneurship after that. So it's almost like this entrepreneurial sandwich with corporate in between. So, well, let me I had ask you my that. I had my business running along the side while I took corp- a corporate position. Mm. So the business was still running. I just hired people for it. And that's not a bad thing to do. So again, yeah. growing and scaling. <laughs> so, what do you feel? And again, this is a, an interesting question because obviously you know, having that entrepreneurial mindset, you know, like you, I started an entrepreneurship when I was 18 and a half, almost 19. And, you know, you learn a lot when you're that young and, and when you are at that impressionable age where you haven't been distracted by societal beliefs, right? You, you didn't feed into the nine to five mentality or the paycheck to paycheck mentality or, you know, living till retirement, you know, as an entrepreneur that young, you're, you're blocked out from all of that. You know, you don't end up having to deal with the employee mindset that a lot of people end up having to deal with. What do you feel in those, you know, early stages of of growing that first eight figure business when you were a teenager up until your early twenties before obviously taking that CEO position? What, what do you feel helped you most you know, in those five or six years of growing that business that allowed you to step into that corporate leadership role that allowed you to succeed both on the entrepreneurial side, but also, you know, in the corporate sector that you were in? You know, first, I think it was the mindset at being so young of not having any fear. I look back and go, you know, I signed these leases with guarantees. I had a, um, a payroll. I had operating expenses. And I believe at the time before I took that corporate role, it was like $40,000, right? So, and that was people's salaries back then. And 
And so when you have that, like, oh, I'm just going to sign it. It was like no big deal. Today, obviously, it'd be a little bit different. Like, what's the risk? What's all of that? But like, I think that kind of helped me of like what you didn't know and like what the risk were, because you were just like, we're just going to go for it. We had that, you know, that young mindset of, I don't know what I don't know. And a hundred percent, I would say it's my mentors that I got around. So when I got into the real estate business, that was the young kid. And, but I wanted to hang out with the most successful people in the office. And so I would ask them, can I do an open house for you? Can I actually do your paperwork? Can I just sit and listen to you? Because I knew they were doing something right. And they took me under their wings because I was that annoying kid or the kid in the office, but I showed up and I did the work. Right. So if they were showing up at eight, I was coming in at seven 30 to beat them. And I was just ready and I was hungry. I always had a notebook and I would just always be listening. And, and I think one thing, sometimes they say, when you have something that's said to you, it can either break you down or, you know, propel your life. And for me, it was, you look young, too young to be in the business right? Selling people's biggest assets. So that gave me the courage or the fire to actually learn so much about real estate, exchanges, investing. How do you take equity out? Like I wanted to get my hands on everything so that if somebody asked me a question, they're like, she actually knows her thing despite of how young she looks. Yeah. Age is only a number. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting because there was two things that you talked about. Um, circle of influence being one, but investing in oneself, number two, because having mentors, having coaches, and this is an inter interesting topic uh, at the time that we're, we're speaking about this, because there's, a, there's so many different resources out there. There's free workshop after free workshop and downloads and PDFs and courses, and there's so much stuff out there. My belief is obviously one of the best investments that someone can make is in themselves, mm -hmm. but where that investment will compound over time and give you the ROI that you're looking for is when that investment is made in a business coach or a business strategist or uh, a coach or a consultant, because again, you are shortening the learning curve. You're not taking a shortcut. You know, you're not going through the painstaking hours and hours and years that that person may have had to go through to get to where they are, and you're going down that path that they've carved out. So for you, one, being a coach, two, being someone that coaches with people, how important would you say it is for any entrepreneur that's listening to this that is kind of just still in the belief system that, oh, I can figure this out on my own, or I can just keep going to all these free workshops and put the pieces together who is more likely to succeed? The person that is going to continue to kind of go with what's out there that's free on the internet and Google and YouTube, or the person that's going to take the bull by the horns and make that investment in someone that they know can help them get to where they need to be. You've got to invest. You got to pay to play. If you're really going to want to scale to um, uh, your business to, I would say a big business or something that you never have to take another job or I think you really have to invest. And I think what we all can Google things today, but I think even like you also have to be careful about investing today because you and I both know that there's a lot of people out there that don't have the business experience. And to me, if I was going to invest and I've always invested in coaches that, ha that were a lot further th than me because it pushed me a lot further and what pe and sometimes people would go to one coach I try to do the opposite because I don't want to learn what everybody else is learning I want to learn from the people that are actually doing it that have the lessons on the ground that have the employee issues that have like all the things when people quit what do you do and so I think that when you find that coach you can do all the free things but it'll just take you a little bit longer. But there comes a point where the free things may not even be the best advice for your own business. Where I think there's a lot of information out there. It's just like a recipe, but I think the steps on how you scale your business sort of matter, 
right? And everyone has a different zone of genius. So the way I scale one company is not always going to be the way that I would scale Scott's company, you know, because I got to figure out like, what are his lead lovers? What's his personality? Where's his brand at today? And then what are the gaps of where he actually wants to go to? Like, do I need to connect him with other people? Do I need to create partnerships for him? Do I need to open the door? And every time that I've invested large amount of money into a, into a coach, I also got their network. I also got other opportunities, right? But the ones that I were like, oh, I'm going to cheap out on this coach. I definitely got a cheap like advice. And I was in a mastermind and I did a, my first group one. And some of the things, even learning this online space for two years now, I think we're in our second year is there's a lot of fluff out there. And I would always battle and go, that doesn't work in the business world. Right. And I'm like, I, we had like, we, before the online world, we had already scaled six companies. So we had portfolios, we had, you know, investors. So we always were looking at data. And I think a lot of times we get so fixed on, I want to make six figures. I want to make seven figures, but we don't actually take that home if you're running a business. Right. So like looking at data becomes a better decision than thinking, I think I should do this next. And I think I'm going to Google this because I went to a master class. I think this is what I should do. I think I should start a podcast. And really it's like, do we, is that the next right step for you? And that's exactly why Nancy and I created our expert authority program, because it's everything that we wish was in the programs that we previously joined. You know, we, we wish we had the systems in place that we put in place ourselves, you know, how to build out your website, how to build out your offering, you know, building out your branding kit, you know, getting your messaging right, your brand colors, you know, understanding social media, all of those things that that we were looking for advice on that wasn't being taught, you know, so many people wanted those same things. And we just, you know, filled a gap that was in the marketplace. And, and now we're helping people just like you are. Yeah. The other thing by the I way, I love that program. Thank you. And Thank you. I think what's really important about that program is sometimes we choose the people because we trust them and how they show up. And I think that there's going to be those groups where it could overwhelm you. And there's a lot of different, like you just named a ton, right? And I remember being in that program and going, I want to start a podcast sometime. And you and I talked about it. And sometimes we think like we have to start it right away. Actually, you can actually plan it out and go, I'm going to start it in the fourth quarter or the third quarter, but I wouldn't have started that podcast had I not been in this, in that, in your program. Well, I appreciate that. And it was, you know, it was fun having those calls and kind of, and you know, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, people think it's, it's so difficult to start a podcast, but when, when you and I peeled back the layers and I actually showed you behind the curtains of how I do this and, and what I do, you're like, wow, that's, 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 that's it. It's those, it so simple. those few, because again, simplicity is duplicatable and that's what you want to get other people results. You have to have a duplicatable system. So if I made it uh, in, in such a way that it was so confusing to people that they're not even going to want to start a podcast, I wanted to make the way that I run my podcast so attractive to someone else. They're like, if he can do it, I can do it. And he painted the picture for me. That, that's what creates a successful program. So the other thing I wanted to ask you is, is about mm -hmm. entrepreneurship as a whole. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is so attractive to people about being an entrepreneur that they end up diving into it? And then once they get into the entrepreneurial world, they're like, uh-uh, this is not for me. The freedom, the how much money you can make the, I can create my own schedule. It's so easy because people tend to say it's so easy. It can be, but there are some hard lessons. So people get into it because they see somebody else. If they can do it, I can do it. And there's a lot of marketers out there that I'm just like you. I get that. But like, there's also people that have mindset stuff that they won't be like, once they get into entrepreneurship, and they really understand like you've got to generate leads or you've got to generate clientele or you've got to generate revenue or else you're not going to pay whatever bills you have that can only last for so long. And you do have to have like this grit of like, oh, that didn't work. Let's go try something else. That didn't work. And th people don't talk that about that enough. So I've been playing in the online space for almost a decade now. And, and again, you just got into it about two years ago. From what you see with everything that's going on, on social media, do you feel 
there are more smoke and mirrors than ever. Um, as, as far as what you said about, you know, I'm just like you, I've been there, you know, people showing this, um, you know, grandiose way that they're living their life and traveling and they're just making it look so easy and they're holding, you know, stacks of cash and all that stuff. Do you feel that there's a lot of misleading information out there that is sucking these people in and realizing when they get under the hood that there's nothing even in that engine? There's great marketers for sure. And we've, it's always been around in the, in business. There's a lot of great marketers. Social media, I think is just a platform that makes it a lot easier. And that's why I say, you've got to vet the people that you work with because you can rent cars today and shoot a video. You can rent cars today and take a shot and a, a picture. You can, you can rent, rent a mansion jets. for a week. Yep. You can rent jets. You can Airbnb. I mean, people do it all the time. So it's, what do you want to learn? Who do you want to learn from? And how much experience do they have behind that business or behind that thing that you can learn from? See, the thing is like the reason why we're able to scale so many different companies is because we're in it every day. We see the market changing, even in the online space, we see the followers, the, what, you know, the algorithms changing constantly and you're having to pivot. And so when you have somebody and you're actually doing it yourself, you can help guide people by just not theory, but actual practical things that you're doing to help people truly build the business. And everyone wants to build their business a different way. So it's like, it's a model is what I say. And that works for some people that doesn't always work for everybody. It's figure out what you want to build the lifestyle you want and find the people that are going to get you. It's never about the how it's about the who that's going to get you there. In, in kind of playing off of the whole scaling uh, methodology, which a lot of people are, are wanting to do to keep things very just foundational, what would you say is the most important aspect or initial step one needs to take in order to start the process of scaling a business that they, they love? One is they actually have to have a business that they have. I mean, like some of them say, I want to scale and they don't have a business. They don't have an offer. They don't have like consistent revenue and you don't have to have consistent revenue because there's like growth phase to it, but we go by five C's on when we take a look at scaling somebody's business. One, do we have clarity of where we actually want to scale to? It's just like running a race. If you're going to run a 26.2 mile, that's a marathon. You know exactly how many miles you're running to get there. So it's like, where do you actually want to go so that the coach can actually provide a roadmap or a process for your business? Two is, do we have the capacity? So a lot of times people come and they're super overwhelmed. Well, if I give you more strategies and I give you more ideas, you're never going to do them because you don't have the time you're, you're in chaos and you're operating in chaos. So where do we need to remove so that you have capacity to implement the strategies to get you to the next level? Then it's about what's your core foundation of your business right now? Like what's working? Because sometimes people tend to pivot and like, they just didn't give it enough time the model enough time, whatever it is. And so what's your core foundation that you have built your business on? Is it podcasting? Is it community? Is it, there's a way that people get attracted to you and you've created some revenue. What is it? And then next is we create machines, right? So like we double down on what works and we intro start introducing some things for them to test out. And then last is we collaborate on, you know, what's working, what's not. Cause it's, it's, it's constant. It's like a, it's like I say, it's, it's like a sports game, right? Everyone comes to the Super Bowl with their plans, the both coaches, but they're constantly pivoting. The best coaches out there have the best game management till the fourth quarter, that last second. Yeah. Why do you think NBA coaches call timeouts and draw plays because they've seen maybe a hole or gap in the other team's defense. And they're like, all right, let's try this play right now. And how many times, on that inbounds play, they, you know, score a basket or hit a, you know, yep, uh, a, a, a big three. Exactly. Yep. They take advantage yep. of something that they see. So, you know. And I come from the sports world, so I totally get it. Yeah, and me too. And, and that's the thing. Entrepreneurship, just like life is in a straight line. You're, you're going to have to kind of pivot and, and, you know, deal with some 
you know, potholes and uh, U-turns and, and road closures along the way where you're going to have to kind of figure it out along the journey. And, and I, I love that, that, that visual that you just gave the audience. So before we, we wind down and get to my, my final question, if, if someone that has listened to this podcast is wanting to know more about Raquel and program systems, coaching she has in place to, to help those people scale to, you know, multiple six, seven, eight figures in their business. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Instagram. Um, it's Raquel Q. That's where we spend most of our time. We put out whatever events or masterminds we're hosting at the time. And so if you guys want to connect, I'd love to connect. And I love DMs and hearing about everybody's business, whether we work together today or in the future. I love, I just love seeing where people are at. Awesome. And if there's anyone that I could recommend to help one get their business scaled to the level that you want, whether it's in real estate or not, uh, Raquel is the person that you're going to want to talk to. So I could not recommend her anymore. And the way to connect with her obviously will be in the description of this episode. So you're not going to have to go too far. Uh, Raquel, final question before we sign off today, what does success truly mean to you? Success means um, impacting people and having the best relationships in your life. Mm, I love that. And, you know, I've asked that question hundreds of times on this podcast and not one person has said it's about the money. Um, it's all about the things that come from the money that we make, what we do with it, the impact that we have, the relationships that we build, the connections that we forge and the freedom that we create, whether it's time freedom or monetary freedom or lifestyle freedom, whatever it is. And I, I love everything that you said. So Raquel, uh, first, thank you so, so much for coming on to the show today and uh, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your story with my audience. And number two, just so grateful for you and your friendship. And I love seeing the growth that you've had in the last two years. And it just goes to show anyone that's listening to this, you know, Raquel had to pivot and figure out what she needs to do to grow her business when everything kind of was flipped up, flipped upside down with this pandemic. And you know what, she's come out better since pivoting and getting into the online space, but it wasn't without trial and tribulations and things that and had investing. to be worked out and investing the right, right? We were in multiple programs and we were not afraid to invest during those times. Awesome. Well, Raquel, thank you so much for being here. Truly grateful for you. And this was a phenomenal episode and I cannot wait to hear the feedback from people. Thank you so much. And don't forget to play bigger. Absolutely. Always. So everyone, again, the information to connect with Raquel will be in the description of this episode. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. Please enjoy the rest of your days and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn leads for life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day and thank you everyone for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.